All right, so I need to do my standard intro and say, Jen, are we live? Am I muted? I wasn't muted. I was muted. All right. Can you hear me okay? Larry, are you there? I'm here. Hey, Jim. Fantastic. How are you? I feel like we're a million miles away, but we're not that far apart. No. So today we wanted to do something a little bit different. We've completely restructured the podcast, completely restructured the format, and how we're going to bring that out each and every week. And today we were planning to do kind of a recap of what that would look like. But I wanted to spend a little bit of time just talking about one of the segments that we're going to be doing, which is really the story of life, and that is challenge accepted. So there's a couple of things that I wanted to share. Today was the end of an era for us. We opened on August 21st, 2017 as a co-working space with a handful of amenities that we offered to our members. And here we sit September 21st, ironically enough, um, we are a semi co-working space really focused on the amenities and the value that we bring to small business owners in our products and in our services that we offer. And today we closed the co-working building um, exactly three years and one month to the day after we opened it. And so Larry, I just, I want to go to you right away for just your, your thoughts and then we can kind of just chat a little bit about what this has meant and how we came to the decision. Well, I mean, my first thought is like how incredible it was to have connected with the hundreds or thousands of people that walk through our doors and the relationships that I've built and the people that I've learned from, the community, the neighborhood that we've been in, you know, the, the city that we've been a part of. So I just met such incredible people, which was the sure. reason I wanted to do co-working. I just, I thought what a great concept to be around, you know, different types of entrepreneurs every day, all looking to grow themselves and to grow their business. So um, my first thought is that I'm very blessed to have had this experience and to have, you know, been and a part of the Fox Park neighborhood and just a part of the entrepreneurial, the, the dream builders of St. Louis. For sure. I couldn't, I probably couldn't have said that any better if I've had time to prepare and rehearse. Um, we've been not only a part of the neighborhood that we went to, but really a catalyst for its transformation. I mean, that building on Graboy, uh, changed the entire landscape of the neighborhood, the look, the feel. And I'm just curious what your thoughts are about the building itself. Because the building, we always talk about the building was alive, right? You walked in, there was something you felt when you walked in that front door. And it's going to be tough to walk away from that. Yeah, I love that building. And, you know, probably for a period of time, um, if I'm heading that direction, I'm going to have to take an alternate route because I'll be feeling a little sad driving by that space and not seeing us in there. But I did love the building. I loved the history of it, the way it looked, obviously the way it felt because it was something that we chose to call home. Yeah, and I don't know, there was a point in time and this has changed a little bit over time, but I think there was, with the exception of Christmas day, there was well over a year period that I didn't miss a single day at the building and maybe closer to two years because we started in August and I think I was actually there on Christmas day of 2017. Uh, but I was there every single day for a year and a half or maybe even two years. And it was really, it was really our life's, work. So let me ask you this, Larry, what was the deciding factor for you in deciding to leave? Well, I mean, I had made my decision several months ago. So the deciding factor for me was when the pandemic hit, when COVID hit, I immediately knew in March that collaborative workspaces as we know it and events as we knew it to be were not going to be viable for a long time. And I've learned in business that, that 
one of the keys to success is the art of pivoting. I've learned that in my personal life too. So um, I stepped away from NextCore, you know, right at the beginning of April. So today just kind of, yes, you know, I remember. Yeah. <laughs> it kind of <laughs> wraps it up, but I, but you know, things come and things go, you know, I know it sounds like cliche, but when one door closes, another opens, but I knew our model was dead um, in early spring. Yeah. And you, you talked about that openly and I will tell you, it was really when we started putting some things together and made the decision that we were going to evaluate our business. And one of the things that we did, one of the things that we talk about with every single client is there's things that you have to focus on and there's things that you have to continuously revisit, continuously evaluate if you're going to grow. And you look at it, company after company after company failed to evolve. And you can name giants of their right. time and in their industry, Woolworths, um, you know, Circuit City, major, major retail players, borders, linens and things, just gone. Montgomery Wards back in the day was a huge organization. And then various versions of thousands of other companies who failed to evolve, failed to grow, and then eventually succumbed to their unwillingness to change. And one of the things that we started talking about is what should every company look at? What should every company or every business owner evaluate and evolve through? And we came up with the Focus 10. And in no particular order, the Focus 10 is what are you offering to your clients and how do they feel about it, basically? What is your presence? How do you promote? What about the money? Are you making enough? Are you keeping enough? Are you spending too much? Um, what is your team and your support system? What processes do you have? And then, of course, then there's you. As the business leader, manager, owner, you have to be willing to assess what you're doing, evolve, make the changes necessary, difficult, painful, whatever. You have to make those changes or you won't grow. And not only will you not grow, but you will perish. So Larry, what are your thoughts? Yeah, if you don't, I mean, if you don't adapt, you die. So um, that's true with businesses. It's true with species. It's just, it's, it's part of the cycle of life, so to speak. And so we, you know, for me, I wasn't ready to die. I was ready to reinvent or reincarnate or, or transform or evolve or uh, however you might put it. But uh, for me, the, the essence of NextCore lives on. The body of NextCore dies. So it's a little bit, uh, we were just in Galveston, Texas, um, walking along the Gulf Coast, and I'd see like the you know, the snail shell or the oyster shell. And you know that the, the shell was the place that they lived, but it wasn't the essence itself. So we kind of we shed our physical space. We shed our outward space. We shed a lot of the services, what we do, but the, the essence of it, the spirit of NextCore, which is um, defined in, in um, building and promoting small business owners, through um, you know, designing and guiding their businesses. It's all part of the focus 10, you know, the, building the interior of yourself because if you don't have a strong centered self, your business probably won't involve you know, proper fiscal responsibility, et cetera. That part of NextCore can live anywhere. It could live, it could live at the Schnucks uh, checkout line because I'm if I'm at the Schnucks checkout line and I represent that. So um, it just means we shed a shell. We just, we no longer, I mean, without getting too deep, that's how I feel about human life. When we die, we get rid of the body that once housed Larry, but I know my spirit and my soul continues to go on. So next core continues to go on. It just looks different on the outside. And that's part of the fun of life because you know, if we all stayed the same, just would get kind of boring, I think. I think so too, my friend. That's a great way to put it. So we really wanted to take our company 
through the process that we take our clients through. And we really did a deep dive into what it looks like, what works, what didn't work, and honestly, what was fun and what wasn't so fun to do in our business. And we've taken several clients through these processes. We've evaluated several other clients in their own, uh, to use your words, in their own skin, so to speak, to see where they were and what was comfortable for them. And it was really an amazing experience to take your own baby, the company that we birthed and built through that process and say, hey, look, this is what we're really good at. And this is what we're really strong in. And this is what's fun to do. And anything that isn't fun, anything that isn't working, anything that isn't within our strength area, uh, we need to shed. And sometimes there's things that you can't, you can't control. Like we, we were in Galveston. You talked about this Galveston at one time. And if I'm, if I'm reading it somewhat wrong and I offend the historians, I apologize. But at one point Galveston was the richest, uh, most prosperous city in Texas. And it got wiped out in the late 1800s, early 1900s, or maybe even 1900 with a hurricane and everything shifted and all of the wealth, all of the prosperity, all of the builders moved to Houston and Houston just exploded. And those are factors that you can't control, right? We couldn't control COVID. We can't control what happened. Uh, But know this, we were listening to Jim Rohn in the car and he said the same wind blows on everyone, the wind of opportunity, the wind of disaster, the wind of change. The same wind blows on everybody. It's not the blowing of the wind that determines your life future. It's the set of the sail. It's like you're in a little sailboat and you just have to change the sail so you can go where you want to go. So while we can't control what happened, what happened happens to everyone. And it did literally worldwide. It happened to everyone, but we can't control what we do about it and how we respond. And this was a, this was a big, look inside of ourselves, I think. And I know you probably can take that a little bit deeper than, than I can, but the decision to close was not easy and it was, it was weighted on where the opportunities lie next. Do you want to share anything on that? Yeah, and also like and at the same time, I don't want to over dramatize it. Hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands of businesses across the country have closed have reinvented themselves. I just read about a business um, on North Kings Highway near Page or Union. It had been there for 96 years, a lock, locksmith shop. They closed. Um, they closed their physical location. The owner, you know, it's a generational owned business. They're going solely mobile now. So, you know, what's happening to us is very common. We are not special. We are not unique. Um, we, you know, so... It, it's it's a big deal, but it's not a big deal. And in the scheme of life, it's just like hardly worth mentioning. There are so many other things going on um, to the people that are affected by next score. Obviously it's, it's a bigger deal, but it's important it just in general when life alterations or hiccups happen that you keep sure. it perspective and, you know, you make humor of it and you do the best you can and you go on and, you know, um, it just, it just, you are where you are. It is what it is. And in the end, you know, everything always works out. It does. So we'll move forward. We'll reinvent. We'll touch more lives as we go forward. We'll have, you know, more opportunity. And, uh, for me, I already feel that this is the best thing that happened. Best thing that could have happened. Hands down, no doubt. Right. And can I give you a secret of why I know that? Are you talking to me or our listeners? Yeah. Well, the audience, but I know the audience can't respond to me. I just well, want to give you a I'm listening. Please yeah. ask. Please tell this, me this. This, this. Here's the secret of why I know that to be true. I'm not a psychic. So I obviously don't know what tomorrow, what next month, what next year or five years will bring for next score. We could be dead. We could be locations all over. We, we don't know. 
So if you, if any time in your life you don't know what tomorrow brings, you can either lie in the fear of it, in the trepidation of it, and the negativity of it, or you can lie in the positivity of it, the future, the hope. So I'm just choosing to select that it's going to be an awesome reincarnation for an X score that we're going to look back and say, oh my gosh, this was one of the best days. And like, we would have never met so-and-so and we would have never, ever had these experiences. So I'm choosing to kind of not create my reality, but attract my reality through the way that I feel. And that, you know, that's, that translates through so many different areas of our life, Jim, and to anyone who's listening. We don't really know when you get, we you don't really know. I mean, you don't know what's going to happen. So just, I just, I choose the best. I choose the best. I try to feel the best that I can. So for now, like I, I'm just, I'm confident that it's going to be the best decision ever. So um, this is an exciting time for us. This is an exciting time for me. This is about new beginnings, fresh starts. You know, you, you, I always tell everyone that I work with every second of every day, you have a ch chance to make a new start. The, you know, your, your reality is old news because what you live today is a some, you know, a, a some composite of your previous thoughts, actions, and beliefs. So every second is new. This is new now. Though you, you're not the same person that you were listening to 20 seconds ago or a minute ago. You know, so every moment and every day we have a chance to reinvent myself. So I feel grateful for COVID. I feel grateful for the pandemic. I feel grateful for the opportunity to reinvent. Um, we've already met some some really neat people at, at the new location. Never would have met them if it wasn't for COVID. So, um, you know, cheers for me, you know. <laughs> cheers right. for us and, and for you out there too, for anyone yeah, listening. And, and it's so interesting, your perspective on things, because, it you know, I've known you for going on 10 years now. And when I, <laughs> can I confess something to you? Yes. So when I first heard you talk, I was like, man, that guy is full of it. There is no, there is no way that that philosophy holds true for him 100% of the time. And it does, right? I've seen it. And whatever it is, there's two realities for every situation. You, you choose the reality that is most pleasing to you. And you are a master at that. And I, I just want to say, you know, honestly, and I just put this on Facebook. I tagged it and I sent it out there. I said, I've thoroughly enjoyed this ride and look forward to the next chapter that, that starts tomorrow. Next core, let me just be clear to the world. Next core is not gone. Next core is not dead. Next core will live on bigger, better, badder than ever. In fact, tomorrow, we're going to make a big announcement about next core that I think you guys will like to hear. I think you'll be excited about. So um, Larry, my friend, I love taking this ride with you. Uh, I love where we're going next. Um, I wanted to share that on the Jim and Larry show, not because they're one and the same, but because the shape that we have taken collectively over this last three years and the change and the transformative components of what next score has meant to us are really what's fueling and shaping the Jim and Larry podcast that's coming out. And we hope to impact a lot of people with this product, with this service and with, with this offering, I'm going to give you the final word and uh, just say, thank you. Thanks to everyone who's listening right now. Now, Oh, maybe I should take one more thing next week. The brand new podcast format comes out. I think you're going to love it. We're going to get back to our roots a little bit. We're going to have some uh, some energy, a little more banter. We're going to talk about real things impacting real people and how real champions and real warriors combat those to make themselves even better. But Larry, the final words, my friend, are yours. Final word is I want to say to everybody that I came in contact with at the um, location in Fox Park. I'm deeply appreciative to have met you, deeply appreciative to have, you know, intersected with you and and, and hopefully um, being in the space somehow brought some value to you. Uh, we always believe that opportunity is a byproduct of collaboration. And we, that's what I'm about. That's what we're about. So my final word is thank you. I'm 
blessed and appreciative to have been on this journey for now. We are signing off. God bless you guys. Thank you so much for watching. We will see you next week, 7 o'clock, for the Jim and Larry Show with all new content. Jen, thank you for